the fear of the unknown. The psychological enigma that haunts the mind of many, whether it's your chronic fear of darkness and the misconception that lies within it, or maybe it's your hesitation to open that email from your long lost Nigerian cousin, who miraculously has just give you half his inheritance. The notion of fear in the unknown shouldn't be a foreign concept, as 99% of cinema relies heavily on keeping the audience guessing how the narrative conflicts will be resolved. If you take a mainstream movie like The Avengers, although most of the fun does come from seeing the heroes grouped together to create millions of dollars worth of property damage, the remaining majority of the enjoyment comes from the uncertainty of whether or not the plan to defeat the bad guys will actually succeed. It's a kind of uncertainty that makes you pleasurably uneasy. A feeling of hopeful optimism that the protagonist might survive cake but then grounded by the realism that the story will probably end with undeniable doom it's an unnerving concept a concept that seems as though it was tailor-made for its inclusion within the horror genre an ever-changing group that takes contemporary fears and sprinkles them into false realities and that's where we cue the invisible man The Invisible Man is a movie about an invisible man. The film opens with Cecilia, played by Elizabeth Moss, as she narrowly tries to escape the clutches of her abusive partner, which she does by drugging him, and then proceeding to make every single possible noise she can. Some time passes, and we see that she's living in secret with her big policeman friend James, and his daughter, Sydney. However, just when Cecilia believes she strayed away from Adrian's antics, she discovers that Adrian has died and he's left her a huge chunk of his inheritance. Everything seems to be resolved. Or so it seems. Cecilia believes that this is just another one of Adrian's sick mind games, which is only reinforced by an invisible golf ball man constantly trying to sabotage her life. This results in her sister being killed, her being sectioned, her escaping, her killing the invisible man, but only to reveal that it's not Adrian behind the mask. It was his brother, Tom. However, Cecilia isn't convinced, knowing full well that it was Adrian behind the whole ordeal. He wasn't dead by the way, he was just kidnapped, I don't, I don't know. Cecilia eventually kills Adrian, enabling her to freely enjoy the rest of her life as a sisterless widow with no friends. Now the film itself, I think it's pretty decent. There are a few obvious plot holes and some of the character motivations are a little bit non-existent. However, my main strife would have to be with the ending. You see, if we look at what this story represents for its lead protagonist, we can see that it's a story about escapism. We are presented with a character who has been stripped of her freedom by a seemingly unstoppable force. After believing she had escaped, she's tricked, misled, teased, while having her freedom swept from under the rug multiple times throughout the film. Eventually, she's given the opportunity to break free from her torment. However, it was not the retribution she was hoping for, which leads us to our final scene, the dinner between Cecilia and Adrian. Now, the appeal of horror is that most of the enjoyment derives mainly from the protagonist escaping and destroying the threat being presented from the film's antagonist. So hypothetically, this scene should be a somewhat satisfying ending, with Cecilia taking down Adrian, stopping him from repeating the events of the film. However, if we can interpret this a bit differently, we could completely change the tone of the final scene. For instance, if you think about it, Adrian doesn't really give any clear indication that he is the killer. Other than being a complete creep and saying surprise, which is what the killer said a bit earlier on the film. Surprise. Surprise. Gotcha, bitch! Even if that's a bit of a stretch, Cecilia believes firmly that Adrian set his brother up to take the fall, which could leave the film ambiguous, leaving us to question whether Tom had been behind the whole plan, resulting not only in his own death, but in his brother's death as well. The thing is, though, none of this can be interpreted or even accepted as a slight possibility, which is due entirely to one scene that occurs within the first few minutes of the film. It's brief but it's damaging enough to cause a rippling effect on the overall outcome of the film. And that scene 
is this. <laughs> now this scene conveys two things. One, Adrian is not only violent, but a psychopath. Judging from his reaction from her escaping, we discover that not only would he bring harm to himself, but also to Cecilia to keep her from escaping his clutches. The second thing conveyed within this scene would be that he seems to have a pretty inhuman amount of strength and speed, which is extremely problematic and I'll explain why. When the film was being marketed throughout the press, there was constant mention of the realism of the antagonist, with the cast and crew constantly mentioning that he was human and not just some typical horror flick monster. Actually, this man is a monster. He's not this kind of myth mythical boogeyman. He's a real life person. And, uh, I, I... Now on the surface, that's correct. We have a human antagonist who just so happens to have the technology to develop an invisibility suit. It's nice and it's quaint, except it's not and it isn't. We have an antagonist who can travel from his bed to the nearest freeway at supersonic speeds, while also being able to punch a car window at the strength of a gorilla. Okay. Even if we judge the speed of the character on the old, well it's just a film isn't it? There's no denying that the pure strength demonstrated by Adrian can be directly compared to classic horror villains such as Jason Voorhees or even Leatherface, characters known for having subhuman ability and not that of an actual human being. Now, within the first few minutes of the film, there's no questioning who's going to be stalking Cecilia throughout the majority of it. It's clear, it's Adrian, which in turn makes the reveal of Tom less of a <gasps> and more of a, well it's not going to be him though is it? The inclusion of this scene harms any remnant of ambiguity within the entire film, as within a span of a few seconds, the audience are aware that Adrian shares the same strength ability and motives of the Invisible Man. However, if we cut this scene entirely, which would instead involve Cecilia running to her sister's car and driving to safety without Adrian being alerted, it would help achieve a better representation of the film's themes, one of which being mental abuse within domestic relationships. For instance, without any visual representation of Adrian's behaviour, we the audience are placed within a similar perspective to those who comfort Cecilia as we are instead faced with the aftermath of the abuse. This leads into another common theme throughout the film, gaslighting. Cecilia's choice within the final act of the film seems a bit conflicted. Throughout the film, the sanity and legitimacy of her abuse are questioned, most of which is done by Tom, who we all know is lying because we watch him being shot to death dressed as a human tiger. However, when we arrive at the final scene between Adrian and Cecilia, if we disregard the scene in which he gives the car a reach around, this would be the first time we're actually meeting him. After an entire film of him being either called a dead genius or an aggro loony, in our eyes, we want to side with Cecilia, but somehow we become conflicted on whether we're supporting the right decision. We are stuck in a scenario in which we have to decide who we believe is telling the truth. Do we justify Cecilia's decision to kill Adrian, or are we haunted by the killing of an innocent man? And this is the true horror of gaslighting. The true horror wasn't how well he executed his torture, but how subtly he could convince everyone that he wasn't involved, including the audience. This brings me back to the first point of the video, the fear of the unknown, the fear of uncertainty the fear of distrust, the fear that you're not being shown the full picture. Adrian's torture doesn't end with Cecilia. He has confined many people into his web of lies, such as his brother, who he has used as a pawn and ultimately as cannon fodder. We have the media, who have sympathised with him and only seem to view him for his academic achievements. Alongside Cecilia's friends and family, who are aware of Adrian's past behaviours, but pass Cecilia off as traumatic, or even overdramatic. It's very similar to Rose's character in Gone Girl. A manipulative, jealous, and murdering sociopath who uses a fabricated series of events to twist and mould her own perfect narrative, which is only elevated by the media's coverage on the story, falling directly into her trap due to her perfect persona as a successful girl next door. The scariest thing about this ending would have been that, although Adrian ends up failing to keep his own life, 
he succeeds in keeping a grasp over Cecilia's life, mentally. She is determined to put a stop to a man that has abused her, but still managed to conflict her own moral compass. It kind of reminds me of the ending to Three Billboards Outside of Evan, Missouri, in which Frances McDormand's character decides to seek her own justice on her daughter's murderer, regardless of the fact that the authorities have deemed him an innocent man. Human, subhuman, it doesn't matter. What we have here is the borderline definition of a monster. A being that has not only created an unhealable wound, but one that will indefinitely stay invisible. Come true.